it's Julian, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make house music like Sweetly. As usual, you can get the project file and samples and MIDI and presets and all that stuff from this video in the description. And if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there. This is all available. And yeah, let's get started. This is the loop you heard in the intro. We're at 122 BPM, and the first sound I have here is the kick, which sounds like this. So, yeah, this is the kick. You know, with this style, usually you want one of these bigger, more sort of boomy, lo-fi style kicks. Where you can hear, like, it's just hitting really hard. And just making this really deep, thumpy thing underneath everything else. So, yeah, that's really it for that. I don't have any processing on it. I do have some group processing on this low-end bus. But, I mean, the kick hits really hard. I didn't really need anything. Now, the one thing I will talk about is also like these little things. Like the little doom doom. Those in there. Those are pretty important as well for the style. I kind of just scattered them throughout this. Like there's that one. And then that one hits at a different count. That's definitely important. Like I said, I think it really brings it to life. I've noticed a lot of producers that use these style of kicks. Like Michael Beebe does this a ton as well. Just having that. It kind of breaks it up and makes it so it's not just the same, like, quarter notes on the kick the whole way through, basically. So, yeah, that is the kick. After that, we have the bass, which sounds like this. So, you can hear there's the bass line. Here are the notes. So, we're in F sharp. That's the key. We're in F sharp minor, to be specific. And, yeah, it's just bouncing between F sharp down here and then F sharp an octave up. Pretty simple stuff. This is more just, like, how it's playing off of the kick. And then also how it's playing off of these stabs. And just how everything fits together rhythmically. Now you can also see here, with all the 16th notes, I've swung them a bit. So like these. Like all of those, for example, you can see they're back a little bit. So this is, you'll see, this is with pretty much every 16th note in this project file. The swing is definitely very important for the style. You know, so it gives it that very housey groove. For the sound on this one, I made it using operator. This is a pretty simple FM bass. You can see we just have two sine waves. I've got the second one an octave down, so that's what's making it really deep while still being really fat. Like, the thing here is, like, this is honestly very close to a sine wave, but you can hear if we use just a sine wave, it's really just like that low sub that you can feel. It doesn't have, like, the fatness to it. So this adds that in there, as you can hear. So yeah, after that, we just have, that's it for inside of Operator, but after that, I just have a bit of drum bus just fattening it up, and then I have an EQ8 here, which is just cutting at 100 hertz, just makes room for the kick a bit, you know. i turn this off. You can hear them clashing a little bit more. Whereas when I turn it off, or when I turn it on. So yeah, that is it for the bass. So I have a kick in the bass in a group here. This is a technique known as busting, and you've seen any of my other videos, you've seen this. It's a very good way to sort of tie these things together. Like, you know, if you listen to this, like, if I turn these off, kick in the bass, that's really all the low end. So by putting those two elements in a group, it just makes the low end tighter and more focused and just stronger overall on the track. And I'll show you what I mean. Here's with no processing. And then with all of it. So you can hear the difference there. So the first thing we have here is just a bit of drum bust. This is the main thing that's gluing these together. This is really just like saturating them. But you can hear it's kind of just putting the kick and the bass into the same sonic space here. And making them fit together a lot better. And then after that, I just have the CQ8. And this is actually just as important as the drum bust. Because you can hear if I turn it off. And then turn it on. It's really focusing the sound, and when you put, even though it's not saturating anything or compressing it or anything like that, when you put these two elements through the same EQ, which like I said, is just very much focusing them in a very specific way, you can hear it ties them together a lot more. And yeah, that is it for the long bus. The next thing that we have here is this first stab, which sounds like this. So the chords this is playing, it just plays this one chord the whole way through. This is actually an F-sharp minor. Like I said, that's the key we're in. The only difference between this and a regular F-sharp minor is I took the fifth, this top note here that I just put back up, I took that and put it an octave down. 
So I'll show you the difference here is with that an octave up and then with it an octave down. So it's just kind of a cool way to voice the chord and make it sound like something a little bit different than what it is. Obviously, you know, it is just like a basic minor chord, so just kind of mixes it up a little bit. And then you can see also with this one, got that 16th note there swung, like I was saying from the beginning, got to do that with everything. But yeah, and then for the sound on this one, I may be using Operator. So this is just like a simple FM sound. This is really good for these more like kind of soft stabs like this. To just use FM because you hear you can get this cool kind of like very different texture out of the synth than you can get with just like a saw wave or a square wave or something like that going through a filter. So what we got here is three sine waves. I'm just doing the FM. You can see I've got these at different pitches. I've also got the fine tuning up a little bit on the second one. So yeah, and then I have those going into a low pass filter. Here's without the low pass. And then with it, so you can see this has a bit of an envelope on it, but this is what's making it kind of deep. And more like, you know, not just so intense like that is. Like that would work as well, but you would maybe want to build up to that. For instance, this like fits better with this more chill groove that's going on here. So yeah, and then that is it for inside of the synth. After that, I have a bit of chorus, I'm just kind of spreading it out a bit, you know, giving it a bit more dimension and space in the mix. After that, speaking of space, I have two very short, I have a short echo and a short rear. So you can see the echo is just set, yeah, like this. It's really fast. You can hear it's just giving it that little bleh bleh at the end of the sound. It's not doing a whole lot, but it just kind of brings the sound to life. If I turn this off, you can hear it just sounds really dry. Then we turn on the echo, and then there you go. And then we turn on the reverb, and you can hear. Gives it that last little bit of like just extra sort of spacey stuff. You can see I've got the size down and I've got the decay time down a bit, so it's not doing a super long reverb. Like I said, just giving it a bit more space and kind of ambience. And then the last thing we have on there is just this drum bus. You can see I've got this actually set pretty pretty heavy because you can see I got the drive and the crunch up a bit, and I've got it on the hard setting. I also have the transients up a little, so this is making it you know hit a little bit harder. Here's without this. And then with it, so this is how you really give your sounds that texture like this has. And yeah, that is it for the first stab. And the next sound that we have here is the second stab, which sounds like this. So this one plays a lot less frequently. This one is playing the same chord, F sharp minor, only differences. Now with this one, we have the C sharp up there. So it's a regular F sharp minor, just kind of, you know, mixes it up a little bit so we hear two different things on each synth, and it's not just like the same chord being played. For the sound on this one, I made this one using operator as well. You can see this is also an FM sound. What we did was I started with this. Just like a pretty big kind of honestly very similar sound to the first stab. But then I have it going through a low pass filter. And with this one, like on the first one, I had no attack on the, on the envelope on the filter. With this one, you can see we just have a little bit of an envelope. Or a little bit of attack, which makes it go whirr. So yeah, it's kind of a cool way to mix it up because we get like this one, which is very plucky and has a lot of attack. And then you get this new one that I just showed you, which goes right at the end there. Kind of like a cool way to mix it up. But yeah, and then after that, I just have a bit of chorus. It just kind of spreads it out, makes it a bit softer and kind of just smoother sounding. And then I just have a bit of drum bus on that to fatten it up. Here's without that. And with it, you can hear very important. And that is it for the second stab. That's all we got there. Next thing that we have here are these hi-hats, which all together sound like this. So basically, the way this is working is we have this main hi-hat. You can hear this is kind of like the loudest one, just playing on the uppies. And then we have like these two little percussive ones. Which you can hear, they're really subtle. They're not super, super loud. They're definitely not as loud as that main hi-hat, like I said. But they just kind of add a little bit more to the groove. You know, it would be kind of boring if we didn't have this. It still is an interesting track. But these, it's just kind of like extra ear candy, you know? Yeah, you can hear.
here, it really does add a lot to have those in the background. And then with those, you can see I've also got those. They're all playing on 16th no sense for that. So you can see they're all sworn. And yeah, so that is it for the hi hats. And then the last one that we have here is this clap, which sounds like this. It's pretty simple here. It's just kind of like this more punchy, sort of like hard hitting clap. What you want to look for for the claps in this style is having a lot of body. Like if you listen, this has a lot of mid range to it, which gives it a certain like fatness. But then also, just getting something like this, which is very cracky. Like if you listen to it, it's not it's not ringing out for super long. It's very just like, and then it ends. That's what you want with the style. Just a very like short, tight clap like this. You don't want one that's like, with like a bunch of stuff on it. Just keep it simple. And then from the only effect I have on there, I just have a bit of drum buzz. Here's without it. And with it. I like putting this on the clap. I find it helps it kind of like sit on top of the kick. Like if I, t if I put these two together, here's without the drum bus. And then with it, you can hear it, it really sits on top of the kick as opposed to kind of like fighting for that same space there on the notes. They both hit at the same time. And so that is going to be it for this one, guys. That's all I got to show you. And yeah, so I hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. And let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get the project file and samples and MIDI and presets and everything I just showed you from this video in the description. And if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there because it'll all be available shortly if it's not already available. Thank you so much, everyone. And I will see you tomorrow with another video.